There we go. Um, so as we start out, uh, for folks who, who may not know you yet, uh, could you introduce yourself and your pronouns and what position you have at the church? Yeah, my name is Chelsea Kravka, she, her, hers, and I'm the director of religious education at the Unitarian Church. Thank you. So as we're talking about this service um, and we're talking about the last year of, of uh, COVID that we've been through, um, is there a moment or a story from the last year that really sums up what it's been like? Yeah, um, besides my cat jumping into my lap during a Zoom interview meeting unexpectedly um, and tech issues right before we started. <laughs> um, <You know. laughs> that, that sums things up pretty well. Um, I just had a naked toddler that came running behind the screen. That would also be fitting. Um, <laughs> so this last Sunday was really just, <laughs> it was so perfect. It was so perfect in the craziest of ways. Um, so I'm going to call out Heather Fox publicly um, because she was just incredible. She was teaching our Sunday school program that we do um, at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And um, so to start, she, she was filling in for somebody who was unable to make it. So she was a sub that day who popped in um, you know, the day before, which is great. But, you know, this happens just like it does in real life. Uh, she seemingly started off with this great plan uh, with a book about our hearts and she was ready to go. Uh, briefly, the book wasn't showing on her screen as she was trying to share her screen. And I mentioned that to her while she kind of navigated the tech for a minute. Um, and as that was happening, the children suddenly got really excited about show and tell. And so the lesson just took a different direction. <laughs> and it was really very Montessori-esque philosophy where um, Heather just decided to follow the child. It, it was what the kids needed that day. She just put the book on the back burner. I'm hoping she'll use it for another lesson because it looked like a great book. Um, but it was a rainy day. It was after spring break. It was the day of daylight savings time. And we had a record number of children attend. Um, <laughs> I thought that we would maybe have less children than usual, but we had 17, 18 at one point. Wow. Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you, I was laughing and smiling so much that my eyes wouldn't stop watering for a minute and my face was kind of hurting. And Heather just totally rolled with the changes and she is so thoughtful and so considerate and just an amazing teacher. Um, so a moment that kind of encapsulated what this last year has been. Um, yeah, it totally fit because there were just so many unexpected turns and you just had to adapt as needed. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so what's, uh, what's a place in the last year um, from where you sit that we've fallen short as a congregation? Um, it's hard. <laughs> this whole year has been hard. Um, I think that one of the things that I have really missed and where we've fallen short is getting everyone like in the room at once, you know, like that, that notion of like everybody sitting in the sanctuary, right? Um, I would have loved to see everyone's faces on Zoom at some point. I know that that's clearly not possible, whether that's the tech issues or scheduled, everyone participating at the same time. Um, I think that we get close with our YouTube services on Sunday mornings with the live chat, um, but not everyone participates in the chat box option. We clearly don't see faces during that time. Um, and it's just a combination of things, right? So it, I don't think it's anybody's fault. It's just that there's different needs from the different members of the congregation. There's certain capacity with tech, certain capacity with the staff, different schedules that everybody has. And we can't possibly replicate the exact same thing. We can't do church, but just put it online. Like there's no way to like do that a hundred percent. So I don't think that we've fallen short for lack of trying. Um, I don't think it's, the church or the staff or that our members have fallen short. I think that we've just fallen short because it's a pandemic and 
it's not anyone's fault. It's you know, darn pandemic's fault. <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting. I think you're the fourth or fifth person I've talked to for this and, and every conversation has hit the same piece for that question. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hard. But what's a, what's a success we've had as a congregation in the last year? Or um, what's a success in religious education? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, for a church as a whole, I think that there have been a, a few things. Like, I'm, I'm so excited to see that there have been a number of people that signed up for Beloved Conversations. I think that hanging our Black Lives Matter banner and um, soon to be rainbow banner are huge successes, being visible with our beliefs to the community. I think that's amazing. Um, in my area, I think that a success has just been that there have been so many choices, so many options, different ways for families to plug in. Um, you know, kind of talking about that, everyone in the same room not being possible um, with families, especially being so ridiculously busy and having different needs. A success has just been the ability to use technology and use this opportunity to offer so many different options. And so with RGL right now, like we're doing our online Sunday school, we're doing coming of age for middle and high school, we're offering Sunday school in a bag that is delivered to homes. Um, I'm doing emails that go out with resources each week so that families can do things at home on their own time. I'm recording stories each week. Um, there's ways to get to the church and participate in all ages activities like we're going to do this Easter egg on paper hunt that's coming up um, in the next week or so. Um, so, you know, there's just different ways to plug in in one way or another. So, you know, I see families that have signed up for Sunday School in a Bag, but I have not seen them online in any capacity at all. But they're willing to get a paper bag full of activities delivered to their home. Um, I know that there's families who did the stuffed animal sleepover who didn't even register this year. Like, <laughs> who are you? Okay, but well, you're dropping off your platypus. Cool. Um, <laughs> and that's totally fine. Like whatever works, as long as we are staying connected in some way, shape or form, if we are reaching families in any capacity, then I think that that's a success, even if it's in a small way, this has been a really hard year for families. Yeah. And the stuffed animal sleepover kind of took off. I, I did not anticipate that it was going to be such a huge thing. I think one of the videos has received near 300 views. Um, <laughs> and there were so many participants, there was like, what, 35 different animals and a number of um, older members of our congregation, like not even just children. So <laughs> a ton of people participated and it was a lot of fun. And yeah, I initially thought I was just gonna take a handful of pictures and email them. And then it turned into a series of five 10 minute videos. <laughs> It was a lot of fun, a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, and I think in in the whole year, that was probably the one time you and I were in the building at the same time is when I inadvertently walked into the building at like seven o'clock on a Saturday night. I was the only buddy, the only person there. And then yep. sorry about that again. <laughs> it was dark, so I didn't see your car pull up and I just I had a mask screamed. on. <laughs> I just screamed like that was going to do anything. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the joys of pandemic. Right. Um, so what, what opportunities do you see coming out of this year now that we're transitioning to whatever comes next? What, what good comes out of a pandemic for a church? Um, <laughs> Well, we're, we're starting to think about a time capsule for our RGL. And so that'll be fun. That'll be cool um, to look forward to and to look back at um, one of these days. Um, in general, I think that in many ways, all of us have been challenged to think outside the box, that we have gotten away from the, this is what we usually do. Um, I think that we've seen that we have the capacity to be successful with change, which is really great. Um, 
in my area, I know that an opportunity has been to connect with parents and families in different ways. So kind of like I said before, with the various options where it's not just Sunday morning and that's where we're going to hit people. Um, you know, before it was, okay, well, I'm doing a monthly newsletter. Well, I think that we just need to think about ways that we can keep people updated um, going forward um, so that they can take church home with them, right? So like I took this workshop one time, which I need to figure out a way to offer, but it's like, how do you know you have a Unitarian Universalist home? Well, you should certainly figure that out during a pandemic, right? Like, how do you know that the Unitarian Church of Lincoln is in your heart and not just in the building when you go there on Sunday morning. Yeah. Anything else to include for this service? Um, I'm just still really grateful to be here, <laughs> to be a part of this community. Um, I think my heart has grown in so many ways during this pandemic, you know, um, I miss seeing everybody desperately. We're all going to say that we're all going to feel that, uh, but I'm really grateful to be able to connect in, 